Hello, I'm Georgie Barrett, tech journalist and broadcaster, and welcome to OneWeb's ninth satellite launch. If you've been following our progress, you'll know that there are already more than 250 OneWeb satellites in low Earth orbit. Each one of those little solar-powered marvels is around the size and weight of a fridge or washing machine. And they're moving through orbit, preparing to provide low-latency, high-speed internet from space. Each launch expands OneWeb's capability to deliver that connectivity lifeline to those parts of the world where it's needed most. Today, eight launches have delivered a total of 254 satellites into orbit, enabling OneWeb to offer its communication service from its satellites to all regions north of 50 degrees latitude later this year. Now, that's an area that stretches from the North Pole to the southernmost tip of the UK and connects many communities in Northern Europe, Greenland, Iceland, Canada and Alaska who cannot rely on ground-based communications. Launch 9 will add another 34 satellites to this orbiting network, which will keep up the pace of the rollout to achieve OneWeb's overall mission to connect the unconnected around the world. And that is a big ambition, because while it seems that you know, everyone has a smartphone these days, almost half the world, more than 4 billion people, are not yet online. And for many that are, the service can be slow and patchy. So let's now have an update on OneWeb service progress, as we're going to hear from senior technology engineer, Maita Carreras. The team at OneWeb continues to work super hard and with a lot of passion, as always, during a busy summer, as we prepare to introduce our services for the first time later this year. Today, we are excited to be watching another 34 satellites lift off, which will bring us to 288 satellites in orbit. Our team has been working super hard since the last launch to raise our satellites up to their final destination, 1,200 kilometers above Earth, and also continuing to build the network on the ground. This means continuing to work on our ground stations and user terminals, core pieces of the system and super important to begin demonstrations of our service. And today I'm so lucky because I have the chance of being at a demonstration site. You can see behind me our demonstration antennas ready to perform connectivity demonstrations for our customers. We also want to give a warm welcome to our new investment partner, Hanwha, who will bring valuable technology expertise and we are thrilled to have them on board. Welcome. And with all these, which are the next challenges for Team OneWeb? We have many. We will be showcasing more of our services in demonstrations. We are starting customer services this fall. And of course, more launches will follow as we keep building the network. Go Team OneWeb and wishing the satellites a safe flight. Now, for OneWeb's ninth launch, we return to the historic Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan, which lies about 2,000 kilometers southeast of Moscow. If you know your space history, you might actually know the name of this legendary location. At the very beginning of the space race, 64 years ago, Sputnik 1, the first man-made satellite, launched into space from Baikonur. Vostok 1, the first human space flight with Yuri Gagarin, also made history from here in 1961. So today, OneWeb's pioneering mission and revolutionary technology will also use Baikonur as its launch pad. Now, earlier this week, the Soyuz ST-34 rocket was rolled into its launch position. Let's have a little look at the rocket's journey to the launch pad. The Soyuz launch vehicle will be carrying the 34 OneWeb satellites. They're all carried in the dispenser at the top of the launcher. And the complete stack of 34 OneWeb satellites on this upper stage are protected by the fairing for their journey to space. Now, this is all done in a dedicated clean room to make sure no dirt or debris can pollute the satellite's infrastructure. This upper stage forms the top of the rocket 
and it's then installed on top of the Sawyer's three-stage launch vehicle. We'll see these three stages separate during the launch. The four boosters arranged around the bottom of the rocket are dedicated to powering the rocket through the lower atmosphere and then they are discarded as the engine in the second stage takes over. Now, three days before the launch, the complete launch vehicle is transferred to the launch pad. At Bacchanal, the rocket is brought to the launch pad by a special 500 meter railway. And it's transported horizontally and then raised into its vertical takeoff position when it reaches the launch pad. Once this is complete, various connecting supply cables are attached. And then two days before launch, a full dress rehearsal is completed to make sure that all the systems are working perfectly. Well, that's what it takes to get the rocket in place, all in preparation for this moment. Because very soon we're going to see the liftoff of OneWeb Launch 9. They will shortly be starting the automatic ignition sequence, which is triggered by an ignition key. So let's now cross over to Baikonur to see the action play out live.
Yeah. 